here on Boulevard Drink. Uh, I'm standing next to Moscow Theater. Moskovsky Theater. And they're showing here this Bjordi is from Anton Chekhov. They play Chaika, the seagull, a comedy. Don't have you rolling too much on the floor, laughing yourself like it says in emails. But it's a comedy by by Chekhov. So that's what they show. And if you are reading Russian literature, you will soon find you are having to do with Chekhov sooner or later. And there's the Tetran Cafe. The Sieta Cafe. In there. But today, сегодня, we had no day. It's a day off. Now I'm going to walk down Niglinaya ulica and once again, you guessed it, it's a Terimok. You saw this on the same time last year. So, some things which are good, you just want to keep repeating over and over. So Terimok is still in the same place. This time it's out on the street. This shop here is called Galleria Shishkina. Obviously got in paintings in the style of Shishkin, one of the great artists of Soviet Union. You will also see some Shishkin work in one of my films about the Russian art. If you look for this, you will find it. Okay, so this is Ulitsa Tverskaya. The bottom part of the main road out for Leningrad is you come down to the bottom here with a lots of interesting new buildings. You couldn't possibly walk over this, so what you got? You need a pirihot, like this, a pirihot, to go down under the street and come out on the other side. So we're looking to see what is in this interesting pirihot. Must remember to get a Russian cakes for my wife. So that's what it looks like, this pretty, pretty hot. There's always plenty of weapons. And there is trinkets available here. Probably need a scarf because I didn't bring one. It's a little bit cold. Okay, what you see here is the back side of Kremlin on a hot Nerad, just past Bolshaya Nikitinskaya ulica. This is the back side of Kremlin. So this is interesting office building on corner of Vazdvizhinsky and a hot Nerad and there is food on a pillar. And here is interesting, it's like a Terracotta army of faceless soldiers all looking and walking in a particular direction on organ pipes. If the organ starts blowing, they all fall off. But they're putting one foot forward, best foot forward to the future, and looking, looking to the sky. Behind are these red, very feminine figures with big heads. So, here is back side of Kremlin again. This is Kremlin clock tower, Kurante. Here we got a trolley bus. And on the other side we got a Lenin library. Back down there is a Kremlin. This is part of the state Duma. The государственная Duma. Что вы думаете об этом? This is Vazdvizhnka, улица 2 Vazdvizhnka. Like moving it up. Vaz is upwards and двигать is to move. So it's moving on up street, if you like. There's metro библиотеки имени Ленина, the Lenin library metro station on other side of road. 
So what you can see here on Vazdvizhnka is um, obviously a four lanes of traffic. There's a lot of traffic going on and uh, basically what you have is the beginning. You've got four lanes going across there. You see the four arrows and uh, it's all one way here, all going out of Moscow. This is the beginning of the road, the M1. Already signposted here the M1. This road goes on and on out of Moscow. Same road goes to Smolensk, through Belarusia, through Minsk, or around the outside of Minsk is a, like, like a little detour around the outside now. There's a motorway there, of course. It goes down to, to Brest, where it becomes Poland goes into Poland, goes through Warsaw, goes on to Berlin, goes on through, calls itself then the E30 and carries on underneath Berlin, around the Berliner Ring, calling itself E30 and going all the way to Hoek van Holland in Poland. Uh, and you can take this road almost all the way to Great Britain linking together the two great capitals the only two cities of Europe if you consider Istanbul to be outside Europe is the only two cities of Europe which have more than 10 million people is Moscow and London all the other great cities of Europe are much smaller than this so largest is about 70% of size of uh, either Moscow or London. Only Istanbul, which is not really a European city, can compete with London and Moscow in terms of size of people and also cultural wealth. Because in truth, you can say that not many cities have really got the critical mass Critical mass is an idea from physics that once you get enough weight a reaction takes place on its own. It draws in other atoms. Not every city has the critical mass. In Germany, possibly Berlin now, but even it didn't have the critical mass to be the obvious choice of capital uh, in the post-war period. And when I first heard about critical mass and I didn't know anything about physics, I thought that critical mass meant finding fault with the way the priest says it. But how wrong I was. Okay, there's the man himself, Vladimir Ilyich Lenin. In this plaque it says, in this building, from 1920 to 1923 was founded the Secretariat of the Tsikha RKPB and here was where was being Vladimir Ilyich Lenin he always remind me a little bit of the Emperor Ming in Flesh Gordon there's Anne Hathaway again she gets everywhere that Anne Hathaway and it's still not enough okay this is like a big rocks gallery of Soviet scientists 1849 to 1936 this is Pavlov IP Pavlov you know about Pavlov you all heard about Pavlov's dog well he's still here still waiting to salivate at the ringing of the bell ding a ling a ling no hard luck got no food for you anyway this one next year hi Pavlov's dog hope you don't buy it um, 1845 K.A. Timiryazev to 1920 he's a I can't even remember what he done to be honest with you but he's important here is D.I. Mendeleev he's the guy with the elements he made that table up, like the one I made for the, um, for the prepositions of the Russian language. 
I could be up there as well. If they make it a free place, they can put up their Viktor Dmitrievich Kuliganov. But I, I didn't buy it, hopefully, so uh, they wouldn't know what to put at the end. Mendeleev, the person who wrote the periodic table, in the West people don't call it Mendeleev's table because they don't like giving credit to Rasky for nothing. But he was the one who developed this table. Right now, if he was alive today, he would be Swiss because they would need to bring him into this Hadron thing. Horrible Hadron thing. Anyway, here we have much overestimated person, but very important for communists, Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin didn't disbelieve in God, he believed in God. But he made it possible with his theories to disbelieve if you want to. He didn't want to, please not. Lomonosov, another important Russian scientist. Here's Isaac Newton. Now he was a believing man as well. But he is uh, from 1642 to 1727, wrote the Principia Nature. And this is Galileo. He's the guy that work out that sun is center and other, other planets go around the sun. What they didn't like to hear at the time in the Inquisition. They thought he was Protestant and threatened him with the torture chambers. But he wasn't Protestant. He was just looking through telescope. 1564 to 1642, Galileo Galilei. This is Polish guy, Copernicus, 1473 to 1543. Also a hard time with the church at the time. And this guy, he didn't have a hard time with the church. It's Archimedes. He is the guy that ran out of his bath in 200, between 287 uh, BC, sorry, to 212 BC. Now, it's indeed interesting that even though they were communists and they didn't want to mention anything about the church or anything, they still couldn't change it. They still had to use BC and AD. And when you said to the communists at that time, not now of course, but at that time, why have you got BC and AD? Well, they say this is Nasha era. Yeah, so it's NA, Don NA, Nasha era, our common era. But why? What, what happened then that it goes from old to new? All numbering backwards to numbering forwards. Well, oh, nothing relevant, purely coincidence. You know, only the most important thing in history of planet. The thing that everything in this planet happened for the birth of Jesus Christ. But they kind of wanted to ignore. And that's what they got. They had to use... Jesus is birthday anyway, but they kind of pretend it's not for him. Like they still use the seven days week and try to pretend it's not in honor of creation. But everything we do, it revolves around the creator and the redeemer. That's Jesus Christ, in case you've forgotten. And this, this is Lenin's library, very big edifice to show the learning of man and his attempt to put in his own order in communistic days but all around we see what the upshot of it was in the end it all failed and people had to go and reverse back to capitalism and the many failures and problems that capitalism has as we see now in these days also but still it was stronger then what was this made by this man? Obviously he's not a man, he's a statue. But what he came up with. I don't want to willify Lenin or the other communists. What they did, they did thinking that it was be a good idea. Okay, in the end it got brutalized. In the end it became more and more apparent it doesn't fit with human nature to be communist. In the end, and the more they stood out against God, the harder it was for them to achieve anything. But, 
in the in initial period they probably believed that they were doing a good turn to humanity. They were not particularly wicked people in the way that wicked people go, as you understand it. Of course, all people are just people. They got a sinful nature. But you cannot say that these petty people were necessarily worse than other people. Probably they were better than most people. But they believed in human being can sort out his own problems. And that's not true. You need God, you need Jesus. Otherwise, no end of misery.